Well, some breaking news on the cybersecurity front. The head of the CIA's personal, uh, the head of the CIA and his personal email account purportedly hacked. Some new reports, Director John Brennan keeping some classified files on an AOL account. And apparently a teenager is claiming responsibility for that alleged attack. In the meantime, the AP is out with a new report suggesting that the State Department is one of the worst agencies when it comes to protecting computer net networks. Let's talk about all of this with Morgan Wright. He's a cybersecurity analyst and senior fellow at the Center for Digital Government. So lots of parts to these different stories. Morgan, do you believe that this is indeed just some high school teenager somewhere hacking away at the personal accounts of John Brennan? Uh, Jenna, I mean, could it get any stranger? Yeah, I mean, it probably is, and I'll tell you why. They didn't use hacking in the traditional sense that we're thinking where somebody breaks into a computer network. He used a technique called social engineering, which is getting you to take an action that is untrusted, that otherwise you believe is trusted. He called up Verizon. He called AOL, convinced them that he was actually John Brennan. That allowed him, <clears throat> excuse me, access into the accounts. Yeah, but I'll tell you, nothing says security like AOL. Uh, please, <laughs> senior government officials. And here's, but Jenna, here's the most dangerous part. John Brennan is the director of central intelligence. Right. He worked at places with the, what they call chief of station, the top spook in those areas. His SF-86 contains information on references, on bosses, on managers, on friends. If that file gets out, it could actually put these people's lives in danger because they are supposed to be Classify. I mean, their their uh, identity is not supposed to be known to the general public. We go to great pains to protect people like so, the chief of station. So this is serious. Before I get to some of the issues with the agencies that the Associated Press is reporting, you know, there's a lot of people out there that have AOL accounts. And, you know, I've done this before where you have something at work and you think, wait, I want to make sure right. I remember that. I'm going to forward that to my personal email account so I, so I have easy access to it. It's not nefarious in any way. You just want to keep another record of it. Uh, is there a way that we could protect ourselves. Could John Brennan have taken some really basic steps to protect Absolutely. his AOL account? Absolutely, Jenna. I mean, AOL does not support what's called two-factor authentication. Um, I use this. I have a lot of Google accounts, other accounts that support. And there's actually a free app. I was just talking to General Keene about this, using an app called Google Authenticator. It's one of many, but it's a great one. It gives you a time-based six-digit code that recycles every 60 seconds. Had John Brennan been using a Google account to store that document, I don't suggest he did. But if he did, it would have made it much more difficult, because even with the username and password, Jenna, you, was, you would have still had to know that six digit code that's so wait a on how his does, phone. How does that work? So as you're logging into one of your accounts, you automatically right. see the six digits and then you put it in after putting your, in your password, Morgan? Right. Yeah. You get it up on your iPhone like this. Your iPhone now gives you a six digit code. You look at that code. You either put it in on your phone or you type it in on the website. And this six digit number is only good once every 60 seconds it changes. So it makes it nearly impossible for somebody to get into your account unless you tell them your six digit code, which I don't recommend you do. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like a good idea, but a really interesting tip for us. As I take a look at this Associated Press report about right. the State Department saying it's one of the, the worst agencies when it comes to keeping their network secure, that it got was really bad under Hillary Clinton and it's getting worse under John Kerry and that this is when Russian hackers breached the department's email system. Yes. One of the, the nuggets in the report is that the State Department employees feel that their network is so antiquated that they're using their own laptops at home because they want to be able to work and they feel like their own system is holding them back. What do you think of that explanation as to one of the reasons why one of our federal agencies is less secure than it should be? Well, it's completely not acceptable. There's a standing joke around Washington, and when I was doing consulting work for the government, it was called Yesterday's Technology Tomorrow. This is, a, this is an issue of philosophy of security. People are saying, oh, we're doing all these things, but yet they keep failing the inspector's general report, the uh, audit reports that come out. They can't pass these uh, compliance checklists. They're investing in the wrong places while they're investing for things that make a difference for a few days or a few months. They're not investing long term, which our security depends upon, your personal security depends upon, these employees. So even though they say they're spending more on IT, that's a huge budget. How much are they spending to actually refresh the technology? Jenna, there are still computers in the government running Windows XP, and that is not even supported anymore by Microsoft. It went out of business. You know, it went out of support like six years ago. So is that money or is that time? Is it just having the right priority? What is really holding back the government, in your opinion? Accountability. There is no accountability for failing to achieve these goals. Name the last person, a senior executive that got fired for failing to meet the inspector general goals or the audits, you know, that, that come out. It doesn't happen. You go over budget, it doesn't happen in the private sector. 
you get fired, you get held accountable, especially in a publicly traded corporation. They're spending on the wrong things. They have the wrong philosophy. Their strategy is an embodiment of their philosophy. And you can tell if it's just to check the boxes, well, then that's their philosophy. Oh, we're going to do only what it takes to get by. It's going to take a whole new generation of leadership. Jenna, this is not an overnight thing. We've got to get people in there. It's going to take a process of five to 10 years wow. to change the entire leadership to get people in there who take technology and cybersecurity seriously. Wow, that's really, uh, that's really daunting to think about that timeline. In the meantime, those Russian hackers that got in through the State Department apparently also bounced around right. the Defense Department. To the White House. And the White House as well. So that gives you an idea of some of the vulnerabilities. Morgan, always great to talk to you. Well, watch out Never for the, six, stuff, the six digit code that <laughs> we're all going to have That's now. Right. <laughs> Thank Absolutely you. Absolutely do it.